Hi, I'm Tim Taylor. One Church One Day is all about building Jesus' house of prayer for all nations. That's why we ask churches to cover one day with 24-7 prayer each month and individuals to commit to at least one hour. During this watch, we're asking you to pray regarding prayer decrees determined by our kingdom-minded leaders. The question is, can you do more? And the answer is, well, certainly you can. However, besides praying about these corporate issues, every disciple of Christ ought to have a daily time set aside to read God's Word and to pray personally. So I want to help you learn how to pray like my old pastor taught me to pray so many years ago. His method was inspired by Dr. Larry Lee's book, Could You Not Tarry One Hour? We learned that Jewish rabbis in Jesus' time taught using an outline and that what people commonly refer to as the Lord's Prayer is actually an outline for prayer. Our pastor Larry said that prayer starts off as a desire, becomes a discipline, and in time, turns into a delight. And that's certainly what happened for my wife and I. It transformed our walk with Jesus and that's my hope for you. I'd like to help you the way my pastor helped me. I'm going to invite you to pray with me using the Lord's Prayer each day for the next 21 days. During that time, I'm going to use the Lord's Prayer as an outline and share a little exhortation about each portion and then ask you to pause the video and then to pray with that exhortation in mind. When you're done, start the video again. If you were here in my office, we'd pray together. I promise you that if you'll stick with me, this will change your life. I've written about this strategy in my book called uh, Build the Wall. It shares a 52-day discipleship plan divided in three phases. In phase one, you develop your own personal prayer life. In phase two, we encourage you to disciple other family members the same way I'm helping you. In phase three, it occurs almost simultaneously with phase two. This is where the church leadership uses this strategy to connect the families in your local church to build the wall of prayer family by family. I strongly encourage you to get the book. Why, I've even had a mayor in a county get my book by the case and pass it out to pastors in his community so they could build the wall of prayer in their territory. So, to start, I'd like you to make at least a 21-day commitment to meet with me every day using this video. Following Jesus' instruction in Matthew 6.6, 6, I encourage you to choose a quiet time and place, a secret place. Bring this video in your Bible and notepad with you each day, and I'll help you learn how to pray the way my pastor taught me so many years ago. It's my hope that you'll follow my example and help disciple others just like I'm doing for you. Let's begin with Matthew 6, 9. Jesus says for us to pray after this manner. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Jesus' model of prayer begins with worship. God's name is holy and reflects aspects of his character. Now listen, God doesn't need to be reminded of who he is, but we certainly need to be reminded of who he is. For the revelation of the character of his name often speaks to our provision and deliverance in our situation. For example, he's called Wonderful, Savior, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. In the Old Testament, he's called Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of the Host, the Lord of the armies of heaven and of earth. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. He is known as Jehovah Tzidkenu, Lord, you're my righteousness. His name is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, my peace. His name is Jehovah Shema, the Lord is always with me. His name is Jehovah Rophe, the Lord, he is my healer. And Jehovah Rohi, the Lord is my shepherd. Such as El Shaddai and all the all-sufficient one. Now, let's meditate upon these names and join me in worshiping him. You can start like this. Lord, I come to you and I magnify your name as the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords. I worship you and I magnify your name as Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of Hosts, as Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my Shepherd, as Jehovah Ro Rohi, the Lord my Healer. Now, go ahead and pause the video and continue just meditating upon God's name and worshiping him as you pray. Well done. Welcome back. The next portion of scripture says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So let's start by declaring, Lord, let your kingdom come, your rule and your reign come in my own life. And then pray for your family such as your spouse, your children, your mom, your dad, your brothers and sisters and grandchildren or other family members as you're led. And then remember the leadership and families in your local church. If you don't happen to be in a local church now, 
then I encourage you and I invite you to pray for my wife and I. Then I encourage you to remember your government uh, and pray for God's kingdom to come and will to be done in your city, state, province, or nation. So go ahead and pause the video and join me in praying. Father, I just come right now in Jesus' name, and Lord, I pray you let your kingdom come and will be done in my life. Lord, I pray you transform me, change me, shape me, mold me, and Lord, conform my character under your word. Lord, I pray your kingdom come and will be done in my wife's life. Next, the scripture says, give us this day our daily bread. This is the place in prayer where you get to share with God about your personal needs, your problems or desires. Now ask God for things that you need or tell him about things you're concerned about. It could have something to do with a family relationship or a situation at your work, your health. You know, I really don't care what your problem is. I promise you, God has heard it all and nothing will shock him. So you might as well go ahead and share what's really on your heart. I mean, my goodness, he's God. He knows everything already anyway. So go ahead and tell him and talk to him about your challenges. Now, one of the things that I like to do is I like to use God's word to help me here sometimes pray. So therefore, I will go to Psalms, find a scripture that describes my situation or how I feel. So go ahead and pause your video again and begin to pray. So Father, I just pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord, I give me, give us this day our daily bread. Father, I'm reminded right now of the challenge that I'm in. Lord, I refer to Psalm 3. Lord, your word says in Psalm 3, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they that say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But you, O oh Lord, are the shield for me. Lord, you are the glory and the lifter of me. Welcome back. This next part is very important. Jesus teaches us, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We start by confessing acts that we've done that the Bible describes as sin, iniquity, or abominations. This needs to be accompanied by repentance, which is an actual change of mind that leads to a change of behavior or action, and then we ask forgiveness. Note that verse 14 teaches us that if we do not forgive others, neither will our Heavenly Father forgive us. So, it's very important for you to also choose to forgive those who've sinned against you. Know that forgiveness is not based upon a feeling. It's based upon a decision, so you can choose to forgive even when you still feel pain. So pause the video again and begin to pray. Next, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This portion of scripture is so important because the last thing you just prayed in asking for forgiveness takes away the power of the evil one from your life. So you can say, deliver me from evil. It's like rebuking the devil and saying, get away from me, devil. I have repented. I've received forgiveness. Now get out of my life. You have no legal right to afflict me now. So go ahead, pause the video, and pray as you're led. Finally, we end with, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. So now you enter back into worship. So go ahead and just pause the video and thank God. Praise Him from your heart and thank Him. Lord, I just want to give you all the thanks and praise and glory and honor. I want to thank you, Lord, for this time that we've had together. I pray that you be magnified and you continue to lead and guide me through the day by your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Well, that's it. I hope to see you back here tomorrow. And if you, I don't, I hope you're teaching someone else how to pray. Remember, this starts a desire, turns into a discipline, and in time becomes a delight. I promise you, this will be difficult and you'll be tempted to quit, but don't do that. Because as you spend time with Jesus in prayer and in his word, I promise you, you will begin to perceive his voice in your heart and also see answers to prayer that are offered in accordance with God's word. I encourage you to keep coming back to check for new training. And you also might want to visit our online store, our Kingdom Academy, to learn more about using these spiritual weapons to transform your life, your family, and community. I pray God richly bless you. In Jesus' name.